the amount of times you don't want to know what they're up to. Uh, okay, the, the goal for today was to try and get all of 23 and 24 done. Or, or <laughs> they're always going, you got to be kidding me. I didn't even understand 21 and 22. But first, we need to talk about, um, we need to talk about the, the problem on the test that most people missed. And that was one and two. Now, rem uh, remember, if uh, it was kind of based on this, that one a proton, all of you understood that an electron would go the opposite way. That's good. Um, but you also have to understand that R, well, when you go ahead and do this, when you got mv squared over R equals qvb, those are the, those are the two equivalent forces that are working. Well, this is the centripetal force which is caused by that QV thing. And what happens is we always get wrapped around, we, we get when you're new to this material. Um, just a second, let me put this down. When you're new to uh, All right, anyway. When you're um, new to this material, you know that the charges are the same, but the masses are massively different hugely different masses. Okay, so when we solve this thing for uh, R, so we're going to solve this thing, we're going to multiply R on both sides here, and then divide by MVV over QVV R, I wind up with MV over QV. Okay, so to keep R the same, if these two guys are the same, so we can get rid of those two. So basically what you did was you set, it, you set up the mass of the electron over the electric field for the electron is going to be equal to the mass of the proton over the electric field for the proton. All right, so if this is much smaller and they need to get this and this is, uh, stays the same, if this gets smaller, then in proportion this BE has got to go down too. Okay, right? Because if we have 1 over 2 equals 2 over 4, if all of a sudden I've got, well, let's not do it that way. Let's do it this way. If I have 2 over 4 equals 4 over 8, then if all of a sudden I make the 2, 1 equals 4 over 8, what do I have to do the 4? I've got to make it smaller. It's got to go down to 2. Okay. So that's the... That was the key to question two. Everything else, you know, the rest was just kind of little trivial things. Um, some of you made question five three times harder than it really was. Um, the hard part was trying to get that right hand rule number one, where it's going in and coming out. But it, you wound up with the same magnitude on each one of them. Okay, so now, enough on that. Let's go to the other circuits. Let's go to RLC circuits real quick, real quick. Um, and it's because it's got a neat thing. It's called the resonance inside an electric circuit. And that, because of that resonance inside an electric circuit, is how radios, a radio signal coming from a radio station, we can pick it up in our car. OK, it's because we get you know, that tuner that you have on your car gets into the same frequency. And so, boom, there you go. That's how, that's how you listen to the signal that's been being sent out by the radio station. All right, so how does all that work? Well, let's put it together this way. Um, first of all, um, in an RLC circuit, which you already had in lab, you probably would have enjoyed before you went to lab, having this equation here for the um, capacitive um, resistance, um, you'd had this XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance of that circuit. Okay? And this is measured in ohms. This is actually your resistance. This is measured in ohms. So, as my frequency gets greater, 
what happens to this resistance? As the frequency gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens to this resistance? Frequency gets faster and faster and faster. What happens? To, yeah, it gets smaller. So this goes down like this. Okay. By the way, I I hate to do this, but uh, I, just so that we can get some more class time in, um, I'm going to give y'all can arrange times to meet with your groups if you want. But I'm going to give the next exam will be take home. It won't be in class. It'll be take home. It'll be a week from today. Okay. So, so you can get with your groups if you want, you know, and it'll be due Wednesday, right? But, and it'll be out there on, I'll, I'll make sure I get it out there for you on Monday. It's just so that we have a little bit more class time so I can get the relativity uh, stuff. Because I realized what I've done with having so many exams is I've obliterated like two weeks of class. It's like, no, well, you know we're not covering all the material. I'm testing them all the time. But hopefully I think you've learned the material pretty well. Um, for the most part, okay. Um, now, so so that sets up this one. Now, for the inductive, um, for the uh, inductive, what do they call it? Call that? I always call it resistance, but that's not right. Let me look. Let me look what it's called. Yes, thank you. The inductive reactants, this is, this is the capacitive reactants, and then we have the inductive reactants, is equal to this. It's 2 pi times the frequency times L. Okay? And its graph looks like this. As I increase the frequency, what happens to the, thank you, the inductive reactants? What happens to it? It's, it increases, right. It increases. So this is all a way of controlling the current inside a circuit, which is what you want to do. Okay? This is all a way of controlling the current inside a circuit. And all of this is called, as you learned from your lab, impedance. It impedes the flow of, so you got an inductor, which we say looks like this. This is where you put your inductor. Then you have your resistor. This is where we have our inductor. And then you have your capacitor. And what kind of circuit do we have it hooked up to? AC. It works with an AC. Now, I'm going to do something here. So, how does this affect resonance? You might wonder. How, how does this affect resonance? We're going to find out. I'm going to build a circuit here real quick for you. What's your lab? Your last lab was on intensity and waves, right? Something like that? Okay. Well, we had the energy density for an electric field, right? We've had that before. Correct? Remember? Way back in chapter 18? Maybe not. All right, um, so that might have been helpful, but for the most part, there you go. You haven't missed much, except for the fire drill. What's that? Oh, you told me about that? Oh, there we go. Pathway is going to log off. That's good. Do, do, do. There we go. I'm going to, oh, I can start building it so you all don't have to watch that painful thing. Now, we get something kind of cool out of this, and you might hear some things about people trying to come up with a uh, perpetuum motion machine, which is crazy. Oh, I hate that. Oh, here we Hmm. You're with me now. I'm going to put a battery on this thing for right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oh, okay. Just a second. I want to do something. I want to change the voltage. I'm going to really pump up this battery. There we go. Wow, this one's working much better. Oh, I know what I need to do. 
I'm going to put a resistor in there, otherwise I won't be able to stop it. Okay, we're going to pump that up a little bit. It's flowing, 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 flowing. Okay, now I'm going to remove the battery. All right, I'm going to also remove this resistance. Now, oh, that, that was changing resistance. I want to remove the resistance. There we go. Boom. Okay, now when I connect these two together, I connect these two, the capacitor is all charged. All right, it's all charged up. And then it runs through and goes back. And the inductor, the inductor works the same way as a capacitor also. It stores energy too because see what's going on? It's got, it's got a wire, it's got, the wires are going through it, it's a coil. So therefore it's got a magnetic field that's changing, okay? That's changing its polarity so it's creating an EMF, right? And uh, so the capacitor gets charged up. And then once it's fully charged, then the uh, electrons want to run the other way. And there we go. Boom. So they're attracted back to the positive plates. So it builds up again. And so you, you get a nice little oscillating. This is a frequency of the thing. Okay? Frequency of the thing. Now, this will run for perpetuity because we have um, I thought there was a way for my wire oh there is I thought there was a way in my wire to create a bigger um, I guess not I thought there was a way to set um, the internal resistance of the wire higher I, I can't doesn't seem to be able to do that. That's, that's why these things don't get to go on and on forever. Okay, but they do set up a frequency. All right, now, here's the deal on these things. I'll turn this off. Here's the whole reason I wanted to show you this. We're about done with chapter 23 already. Because you guys already had a long, arduous lab over it. We talked about the impedance. When you dealt with this guy and you had no idea what, what this and this were. Um, but that's all right. You're smart. You figured it out. Osan walked you through it. That's all right. So. And I think today, I will, um, some of you would panic if I showed you your lab grade, but, it's, but we've got other deals cut on the side because you had family emergencies and stuff like that that I didn't let Osan know about. He doesn't, it doesn't matter that he knows about that or not because I control, I'm the final arbiter. So I'm going to go ahead and publish your lab grades that Osan sent me and you'll, you'll breathe a sigh of relief. You'll go, oh, okay. Sounds bad as I thought, All right? Because they're all, they're all very good. So, except for a handful of you that he didn't know that you were, you had family issues during two of those labs or one of those labs. All right, now, so here we go. So, um, here's the deal. Resonance occurs when the frequency of a vibrating force exactly matches a natural frequency of the object to which the force is applied. Okay? Um, so resonance occurs just like we talked about in physics one. When you're walking with that square tub of water or something like, so you're, you're mopping the basement floors or something, mopping the tile on the basement floors and you've got this square plastic tub of water and you start walking and it starts, the wave starts to go. And if you get in the same frequency, if you start going like this with the same frequency of the water, what happens? The amplitude really increases. You've added a lot of energy to it. Okay, and so that's what the same thing with resonance. So that is how um, a uh, what do you call them? You're on the beach and you want to get some coins. Yeah, thank you, thank you. A metal detector works. Okay, that's how a metal detector works. In other words, here it is. It's got the natural frequency. It sets a natural frequency which is equal to this. 
1 over 2 pi times the inductance uh, times the square root of the inductance times the capacitance um, that sets up a frequency okay that gives us a nice little frequency now I've cut out all the homework from chapter 23 where we derive these little guys and everything else we just don't have time for the summer to do that but um, so in other words your metal detector has a, current, has a circuit that kind of looks like this Ooh, it's got the inductor over there it's got an inductor over here like this it's got two different circuits okay and we know that this will cause induction or um, the electricity in, in this one will cause uh, this to vibrate at a certain frequency but what happens is this guy goes over a substance a piece of um, is that gold chemistry people okay goes over a piece of gold it's got a certain frequency, okay? It's got a natural frequency. In fact, I don't know if I've told you all this, your, all the atoms and molecules in your body are vibrating at a frequency, and they're moving, and the velocity of those frequencies is actually the speed of sound, okay? But the only thing that keeps Thomas from flying out this door at the speed of sound is they happen to be all going all in a different direction, all right, which is a good thing. That's a good thing. If they all happen to line up and decide to go in one direction, whoosh, supersonic speed, Thomas goes out the door. That would be something to see. But anyway, um, so, so then when this gets over it, all right, so when these things are, are at the same frequency, you don't hear any difference. It's just, eh. And then all of a sudden, this guy gets thrown in there. The frequency gets off, so the wave gets off, so you start hearing this nah, 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 type thing, okay? And so that tells you, and you could probably look, and they might even have a dot. I've never used a metal detector before. Um, I used to tease my friends who were combat engineers, because that's what they'd do, go out and find IEDs, that their training was this. But anyway, um, so, but, uh, so, anyway, um, they go out and, and look for those things. So I've never used one, but I'm sure they've got little gauges on it to tell you what the material is based on the natural frequency of the thing. Size. What's that? Size shape. Mm hmm Yeah. Oh, they do? You've worked with one? Oh, cool. It was like a hollow plate. It wasn't really like a thing that, you know. Moved around. Oh, OK. Yeah. Okay, so I, that's what I wanted you to get out of this, was that, all right, so now, so now, here's the deal. With your car radio, the, uh, say, uh, okay, I'm old, say KCUR pumps out at 89.3 megahertz, okay? That's what old people listen to. Or if you're cool and old, you listen to 90.1. Okay, any of you know about 90.1? KKFI, it is the only radio station in Kansas City. You can get everything. I mean, you can listen to anything on there. And some of it's local and stuff. That's where, uh, what's his name? Got started to finally get famous. Tech Nine, I can't remember what's his first, who's the leader of Tech Nine, what's his name? Aaron Yates. What? Aaron Yates. Yeah. That's why he, he was kind of first started to get discovered. But anyway, they put out a frequency of 89.3 or 9.1 uh, megahertz. Okay, megahertz. And you tune your car, your FM radio to 90.1 megahertz. What's it doing? It starts resonating in the same frequency, and so you pick up that signal. All right? That's what happened with the uh, electromagnetic wave which comes out, which is what we're going to talk about now. Okay? Even though you guys have already done light waves and its intensity in lab. The only good part was, it was like a 30 minute lab, as I recall. Okay. Because I started seeing a lot of you out on the streets at about last week at about 2.45. And I was like, oh wow, that was a quick lab. Okay, so here we go.
Wait a minute. Oh, slideshow. From the beginning. Current waves. Catch a wave, catch a wave. Let's put it on top of the world. All right. You know what waves are before we get started? What's a good way to... I, I, found it, I found it nice, well, I actually taught out of this physics book. It was um, Physics for Future Presidents that I taught last semester, which is a really fun class. It's all the physics you should probably know, but we don't teach you because we get so bogged down in the equations and algebra in this thing. But the author of that book came up with a great definition, I thought, of a wave. A wave, he says, let me find it. I will find it. I know I will. I hope I brought in the right set of notes. But, okay, a wave is a way of transporting energy long distance without really transporting matter. Think about it. It's a way of transporting energy a long distance without really transporting, without transporting any matter. Um, they, the, and all waves are based on water waves. So those are the first waves that you know, people really started looking at and everything. Um, and we got the classic wave is, I should have brought it in, I guess I could use my belt but then something embarrassing might happen, but anyway, um, if you hold two string, uh, string at two ends, one person starts to go like this, get a nice little wave that goes up and down, it's got a velocity, right? The wave moves, but does any part of the, but does like this little piece of leather on the belt actually move to that end and bounce back? No, it's the wave goes up and down, but it's transferring energy over distance without really transporting the matter, which is what waves are, okay? Now, sound, that's a great disservice we do to you all, is we don't teach you about sound in physics one, which is a phenomenon that you're probably very interested in anyway. Sound needs a medium to travel in, okay? Not like um, the TV show, that boring TV show medium, but where she's a go-between. Anyway, I, um, and nothing's more boring, I think I've said this before, nothing's more boring than your friend, you're in a conversation, you go, oh, I had this dream last night, what's your first reaction? Oh, I gotta go, see ya, you know, I don't wanna hear about it. Anyway, uh, or you say, was I in it? No, forget it, be quiet then. All right, um, but, it needs, sound needs medium to move in, okay? Because basically what sound is, it's um, uh, air molecules or the mo molecules of the material banging against each other and going like this. It's creating a wave, a longitudinal wave that goes like this, okay? Where it smashes in, smashes, 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 and contracts. That's a sound wave. They need a medium. Electromagnetic waves don't need this medium, okay? They give a very complicated thing here, but here's the first thing I want you to know. Electromagnetic waves are created by accelerating, that's the key, accelerating a proton or a neutron, okay? It's got to be accelerated. So here's the first question. To get a radio signal to leave this wire, as we're seeing here, what kind, and it's, the answer is right here on their slide, what kind of current do I need? Do I need AC or DC? AC, because even though, because what I need is I need the current to go one way then turn it around and go the other way. That accelerates something because it's changing direction over time. So we've got an accelerating electron going up and down that wire that will send a wave out in all directions, okay? In all directions. They, they just, for simplicity's sake, they just have this going out in one direction. What kind of mathematical graph is this? It's a sine, right. It's a sine wave. It's a good old sine curve. There it is. When the sine of zero is zero, this is a good old sine curve. Sinusoidal, goes in a wave. Um, that's what we mean, I don't know, I might have said it in physics one, whenever you hear about simple harmonic motion, harmonic means that you've got sine and cosine functions in it. That's what, that's what we mean by harmonic, okay? It's not a musical term. Even though this all applies to music too and the way we hear um, sounds. Again, if we set up the same, the right frequency, 
uh, 440 hertz per second. Is it 440 per second or per minute? I can't remember for concert A. Then we have a nice concert A. Okay. All right, so what happens? So again, what happens when we generate a current in a long straight wire? It's used to generate an electric wave. Oh, it creates a magnetic field. So it also sends a magnetic field out. And is this magnetic field is what to the wire? It's, it's in a perpendicular plane to the wire, right? So I'm going to do my electromagnetic wave dance here. All right, so they start here. Now I'm going to be the wave, and I'm going to move that way. I'm going to move that way towards the door. So when I start to move, I got wave coming. Here's the magnetic wave coming out at you. Electro, electronic wave coming up this way. Then it comes down, goes back, goes up like this. Okay, that wasn't too bad. If I do it slowly, I can do it. All right. So, but it's also going in all directions. It's going everywhere. It's electromagnetic wave. Okay? So it looks like this. And we get far enough from the wire, we got a nice electromagnetic wave moving like this. And in a vacuum, it moves how fast? The speed of light. So you got that right. It moves the speed of light. Okay? Now then. Uh, the electronics, the electronics inside an electrical system does not even move near the speed of light. Okay, remember that because there's so much gunk in there, it slows down. Things basically, y'all, remember, y'all had to find that drift velocity in that one lab? Yeah. You showed me that problem, I said, ah, he'll tell you. Did, did you ever find, did they ever show you how to do that? Did they explain to you what the drift velocity, oh, you didn't, you didn't have the 250 lab and they didn't do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, 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 and Jackie got stuck in the 250 lab. He didn't have to do that question. Um, do you know what drift velocity is? That's kind of the important thing to know. The drift velocity is actually how fast that one little electron is moving before it smacks into another one to make the current. That's what the, it drifts. Bang. Then it hits another electron. And that's what they mean by the drift velocity, which is anywhere near the speed of light. Okay? It's not anywhere near the speed of light. So now, we come to this. Okay? Here's an antenna. Here's what I was talking about earlier. Okay? Here's an antenna set up. And you've got a radio wave can be detected with a receiving antenna wire that is parallel to the electric field. Okay? So you've got a little receiving wire parallel to the electric field. It comes in, hits our antenna, little induction occurs, induction right here occurs, and so that goes to our amplifier, um, to our video, to our audio and video circuits, okay, video if it's a television signal coming in, all right, and you can also set up a receiver if it's coming in. Uh, perpendicular. You set up your, um, as you can see, this is what a um, magnetic field antenna looks like. It's set up perpendicular to the wave. So what happens? Magnetic field penetrates in here and is changing all the time. So you got a changing magnetic field. What's that do? That it's a circuit that goes around the loop. Most of you did. Um, well, it's going to create a circuit that's going to go back and forth. Most of you did very, very well. In fact, all of you did very, very well on that dropping the magnet problem thing. Some of you do some great pictures of it going through, coming out the other end. So that was good. Same kind of thing. All right, here's the deal. Here's the thing. In physics, chemistry people, pay attention. Because you guys use something different. You guys use HF, right? Or HV, or something like that for HV, okay? And where uh, V is the wavelength and H is the frequency, okay? In physics, we use lambda as the wavelength and F 
as a frequency. All right. So all, and we're going to just kind of look at this chart for a minute. Okay. All all waves, electromagnetic waves, have a wavelength and a frequency related by since they all move at the speed of light. C equals F times lambda, the frequency times lambda. Okay. So what happens? We got to keep C constant. So what happens to um, the wavelength if the frequency is really low? What happens to the wavelength? It gets really long. Blue. You know, the radio wave. I'm really long. Okay. I'm ten to the. Th I'm I'm up here at. Uh, well, this radio wave looks like ten. Hundred thousand to that. Yeah, this one's like right around here. It's like um, ten meters long. This one is around. Looks like it's. This is. Uh, it's it's longer. <laughs> I ran out of. Uh, what would that be? About seventy. Because this is ten thousand. So it'd be about seventy-five hundred meters long. Your AM radio waves are about seventy-five hundred meters long. FM radio waves are quite a bit shorter. They're only about, looks like they're between eight and nine meters long there, so they're a little bit shorter. Okay? That's why FM radio waves, uh, even though your book kind of gives a funny example, because they're, because they're, because they're smaller, they, they can't go around buildings very well. But a nice long wave can get around things much easier. But I'm still perplexed why if you're happen to be destroying your brain cells and listening to sports talk radio on AM, okay? And um, where they're talking about the same things over and over again. And I mean, we've got two of the crappiest professional sports teams. But anyway, <laughs> luckily we got KU and MU basketball. Otherwise, we'd be in trouble. But anyway, uh, but when you go into like the parking garage here on campus and you go Lower? You can't hear the AM, but you can hear the yeah. FM. I've, I've got to figure that out. It could be due to the amplitude. It could be the amplitude of the wave um, vice the actual length of the wave. Okay? But because think, well, really long waves um, have a tendency to bend around things much easier. Okay? That's like sound waves are nice and long. Okay? And so that way, if I open this door and I start yakking right here while I'm in the door, people can hear me out in the hallway, right? Because my sound wave is going around, it's bending around and bouncing off things. But can they see me around corners? No. Not unless I was traveling at the speed of light. Then they could. But then my wave would be out there. So, um, so they can't hear me because, because my, the wave of my reflection doesn't de um, doesn't diffract very much, all right. So as as the frequency goes way up, here's the light spectrum. It's right in here. Look at these waves are really really short. They're really really small. It's kind of like if I have a big piece of rebar, you know that that's that stuff that they lay down on the on the streets. You see it every once in a especially now when they're redoing the library, it'll pop up and if you're out running you might trip over one that's sticking up. Um, oh, they don't want me to they're telling me my pathway's shutting off. I just wanted to see what my enrollment for next semester is, make sure I had a job. Anyway, okay. Um, and I do. Got a good old two hundred students again coming in. But anyway, um, the uh, the, uh, if you take a piece of rebar, um, when it's really, really long, when its wavelength is really, really long, it's real easy to bend, right? It bends real easy. But when we, if you cut a piece this short, can you bend it? No. Same thing here. When these wavelengths, or these gamma rays and stuff, you know, that's pretty short wavelength. That's 10 to the negative 16th. A nanometer is 10 to the negative 9. This is here. Here's a nanometer at 10 to the negative 9, okay, which is our x-rays. Now, our light rays are in, in the middle here between 10 to the negative. Um, in fact, you'll get used to seeing, except that we're going to kind of gloss over chapter
27 pretty quick, which is kind of too bad. But it's this slide explains everything. It's too bad because uh, some of the things that you guys use every day, like, um, well, I don't know. You guys don't use CD players anymore, do you? You use your iPod. It's a different kind of thing. But old people, we still use CD players and stuff, and you learn how they work, DVD players. Um, basically, what they're doing is they're changing the wavelength all the time, which changes the signal all the time of ones and zeros, which gives us a different signal. So it gives a different impression, all right? Gives a different picture, or a diff the picture's moving or changing, or the sound is moving and changing. Okay. Much better than the old celluloid things. So isn't it just like the same thing you do in regular DVDs? Like regular DVDs use a lab laser and then you always use the blue for the Oh, really? Is that the difference? Yeah. I have no idea. Well, I mean, I like open up my Blu ray player and it's like the light is blue. Oh, cool. Okay, that's probably why they call it the Blu ray. All right, now then. What are you supposed to What? All good science teachers should help you to be good parents. Okay, so when your kids ask questions like why is the grass green, you know, all you guys can say, well, it's because it's chlorophyll and chlorophyll is green. And it's got a wavelength of this, you know, it's got this wavelength that's reflected off and so you can see it and it looks green. And the sky is blue because it's got a wavelength like this. And the universe is expanding, so things moving away from it, all right? Um, those kinds of things. But if you really so where we science teachers fail you, the niftiest web page in the world, in fact, I went there because Kurt asked the question, how do you discharge a capacitor? And that's why this lecture is kind of, I kind of went to the fallback plan. I went to the electronic substitute here. Uh, uh, because I got hung up on there, how stuff works. If you have a question about anything, how stuff works. It's much better than Wikipedia. Because it's, it's, it's just good. They've got actual good stuff on there with video that shows you know, how to discharge a capacitor, um, those kinds of things. Basically, there's just a switch on a capacitor that lifts the dielectric material, and so the charge goes through, and then it goes back down. That's basically how it works. All right, how stuff works. And if you, they had a thing on there, if you want to discharge the capacitor in your refrigerator, which is always charging up and decharging, charging up and decharging, um, it said the not recommended way was to stick a screwdriver between the two plates. <laughs> that wouldn't work, you know. Make sure you're grounded before you do that. All right. Not grounded, right? Yeah, not grounded. Whatever. Yeah, not grounded. Ooh. Don't do it. <laughs> Stand, you don't want to be a part of the circuit. You don't want to be a part. You don't want to close the circuit around you. That's what you do not want to have happen. Okay. So, remember this. C equals F times lambda. That will show up again in chapter 26. It will show up again in chapter 27, which we're going to do rather quickly. And you'll have a take-home test over 24, 25, and probably... Just 24 and 25, because we'll get through um, a week from today, because we'll get through chapters 24 and 25 um, this week easily. Okay? So I think I beat this thing to death. No, the spectrum. Okay, now then. Talk a few more little things here. Infrared. Infrared. That is heat. That's where your heat waves are. Those are electromagnetic waves caused by radiation. So infrared is the heat. That is how our, um, so what do we have? We've got infrared detectors. Y'all are too young. Did y'all remember the movie Predator? <laughs> That's the way he saw things. That's the way he saw Arnold, right? Because he'd pick up Arnold's um, body heat and stuff. And so how did Arnold catch him? He covered himself in mud. I don't figure this out. See, I don't know this stuff. He never went to college or anything, but he learned all this stuff. He's actually a pretty smart guy. Um, but he figured out real quick when he came to America, he's going, oh, I get how this place works. 
right? Self-promotion is everything, right? Um, so do something, do one thing really well, and you can, that opens avenues into all kinds of stuff. Okay. All right. So and so this is how when they have um, our new. You see the when you see the pictures from um, Iraq or Afghanistan yeah. now the soldiers have the new the Marines we were the first ones to have the digitized camis camouflage material because what that does is it breaks up the infrared signal so that those infrared detectors can't pick you up. All right. Okay. Green what? Because everything's hot, right? Oh, like, like the, the, like the, the visual visual visual. or the night vision goggles. Those are a little bit different. Those are working on same thing. They work with this uh, with the electromagnetic spectrum, but that's getting into the whole quantum mechanics of how right, things work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are those night vision goggles. Yeah, and they pick up infrared too, but. But for the most part, what they use is ambient light to increase, and then they increase the light intensity, just like your lab. They increase the light intensity so that you can actually see. Um, okay. So, if you're told um, something like this, find the range of wavelengths for visible light. I, I, one of my favorite types of problems is um, because of that. Uh, Diffraction gradient, radio waves, the speed of light in a vacuum. When we look at the speed of light, let's look at the actual speed of light. One of my favorite, one of my favorite types of questions is: is if the moon is so far away and you send a radio signal out there and it comes back, you know, what's the wavelength of that radio signal? If it, if you're given a certain amount of time or something like that. So don't forget your physics one stuff like d equals v t, those kinds of things. So therefore. Uh, Distance equals velocity times, I about said volume times temperature. No, distance is velocity times time. And so D can also equal lambda F times T. Okay? Okay. All right. So, right now, Hubble is, this is just kind of, you know, there's all, I watched The Simpsons last night, poor Lisa. You see Lisa, she's all worried about global warming. So they gave her, I can't, ignore it all pills. <laughs> she got her all drugged up on ignore it all. What is this thing for astronomers? Astronomers are all upset because Hubble is starting to lose its funding and people are going, hey, we don't need the Hubble. What does it do? We're real close to coming up with finding because Hubble can get up over the atmosphere. It's way up high. Um, it's taking pictures of we're getting images back from what happened 400,000 years right after the Big Bang. I mean, we're getting there. And how long has the universe been around? About 14 billion years. Okay, it's been around about 14 billion years. So, they've been, so they're starting to get images of things that happened 13.2 billion years ago. And so we're getting real close to what did it look like at the very beginning? So. Um, so they so they'd like a little more funding for the whole space telescope. Oh, and by the way, since we won't end here, but by the way, if any of you you, you all have already had eight hours of physics, okay? How many do you need for a minor? I think it's 17, 18, 18 hours. So what we make you do is take three more hours, and you have to go to 35 colloquiums. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Some of you have. I've been to like one and went, God, that about killed me. But anyway, um, no, three more hours and then you can do like an hour's worth of lab work with one of the professors or something for credit. Um, and we are, but they have to be over 220. But this fall, if you have an extra three hours, like I know you all do, this is, you can take. Um, this fall we have uh, our astronomer, Dangerous Dan McIntosh, is now on staff. and. Um, He's got astronomy 350. The calculus for it is about calculus 80 or calc 1 type stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and 
like here, maybe not even that much. Okay? And so if you want to, if you're thinking about, if you need that minor or something to kind of juice up the, uh, the uh, CV for medical school, dental school, pharmacy school, whatever, um, the astronomy classes, which will be back to back, would be a good way to do it. Plus, take the real circuit, plus any labs after, after these labs. The next labs are like meet once a week, but with real professors, and, you, and, and there's only like eight of you in there, and the, the equipment works, too. So it's kind of fun. It's a lot different. It's a lot different type thing. And you can actually learn how to, and it looks good if you're going on to graduate school in biology or chemistry, if you've had some of these advanced circuits type labs in, in, chem, in physics. OK, but anyway, that's enough plug for the department. We don't have any money. We need more miners. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I will, we will finish uh, chapter 24 on Wednesday and start mirrors on Friday. And I'll bring in, and I'm going to bring in some fun electromagnetic stuff on Wednesday also. OK.
there, young viewers. It's your girl, D, your KC career girl. You know what's happening on this show, exploring new and exciting careers. But of course, you know, if we're going to be exploring new and exciting careers, we must dress the part. I'll be back in a sec. Presto, now that I'm back and dressed for success, let's talk about the career professional that I'll be meeting with today. Today, I'll be meeting with Miss Tiffany Williams Jello, who has her own marketing company called Vision. Visions Marketing Communications. studio with Miss Tiffany Williams Jello. Miss Tiffany has her own marketing communications firm and we'll get into a little more detail exactly about what she really does at her firm. Miss Tiffany, it is such an honor to be here with you today. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Let's get started with our interview. Um, can you tell me exactly how did you get inspired to have your own marketing business? Oh gosh, it uh, started way back when I was a kid. I was the only child. Uh, which meant that I had to find ways to entertain myself and uh, I would pretend that I was a DJ at times, uh, a rock star, <laughs> and uh, basically my audience would be like my stuffed animals. Uh, so I always enjoyed performance or, or being in front of a camera. And then also uh, I found, found uh, myself spending a lot of time writing as well. Um, I would write books, I would write poems, and uh, that carried over into high school. And uh, I had uh, a teacher. Um, I worked on the high school newspaper. It was called Southern Exposure. I attended Raytown South uh, High School. And uh, my teacher uh, basically one day presented uh, some information to me about the Minority High School Journalism Workshop. And that is sponsored by the Kansas City Association of Black Journalists, which is a chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists. And I would encourage uh, your Casey Career Girl audience, um, if you have uh, women in the audience that are in high school, um, and, and boys, of course, mm -hmm. um, that they would uh, check that out. The, the National Association of Black Journalists, they have some great programs for high school students that are interested in journalism. Um, but I went through that program. Uh, basically, it instructed us, uh, the students that went through the program, in the fundamentals of journalism. So I got an opportunity to go to news stations and shadow news reporters and newscasters and um, go out into the field and uh, try my hand at uh, doing my own news stories. Mm -hmm. And so I would go out, interview people, uh, come back, write the story. Uh, we actually got a chance to work in some of the satellite offices of the Kansas City Star and uh, write stories um, and uh, then come back and uh, to put a newspaper together and uh, present the information and present our own stories. And then we also did mock newscasts through um, KNBC Channel 9 News okay. um, as well. Now can you share my KC Career Girl viewers if they wanted to uh, join the Minority Journalism Program? How would they be able to get in touch with that program or would they need to talk with their principals or their teachers? Can you share with them a little bit more about how would they be able to join that organization? Sure, Deidre. Um, Basically, I would encourage students to go into their high school counselor, um, ask about the Kansas, uh, Kansas City Association of Black Journalists uh, Minority Journalism Workshop. Um, ask them if they have any information on it. If they can't get it through their high school counselor, then I would encourage them to go to uh, that organization's website. I believe it is www.kcabj.org. Um, and they could find, possibly find the information there. Um, there is also a man by the name Hey, what's 
up there, young viewers? It's your girl, D, your KC career girl. You know what's happening on this show, exploring new and exciting careers. But of course, you know, if we're going to be exploring new and exciting careers, we must dress the part. I'll be back in a sec. Presto, now that I'm back and dressed for success, let's talk about the career professional that I'll be meeting with today. Today, I'll be meeting with Miss Tiffany Williams Jello, who has her own marketing company called Vision. Visions Marketing Communications. What's up there, young viewers? It's your girl, D, your KC career girl. You know what's happening on this show, exploring new and exciting careers. But of course, you know, if we're going to be exploring new and exciting careers, we must dress the part. I'll be back in a sec. Presto, now that I'm back and dressed for success, let's talk about the career professional that I'll be meeting with today. Today, I'll be meeting with Miss Tiffany Williams Jello, who has her own marketing company called Vision, Visions Marketing Communications.
Okay, okay, KC Career Girl viewers. We are now in the studio with Miss Tiffany Williams Jello. Miss Tiffany has her own marketing communications firm, and we'll get into a little more detail exactly about what she really does at her firm. Miss Tiffany, it is such an honor to be here with you today. Thanks for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Let's get started with our interview. Um, can you tell me exactly how did you get inspired to have your own marketing business? Oh gosh, it uh, started way back when I was a kid. I was the only child, uh, which meant that I had to find ways to entertain myself. And uh, I would pretend that I was a DJ at times, uh, a rock star, <laughs> and uh, basically my audience would be like my stuffed animals. Uh, so I always enjoyed performance or, or being in front of a camera. And then also uh, I found uh, myself spending a lot of time writing as well. Um, I would write books, I would write poems, and uh, that carried over into high school. And uh, I had uh, a teacher, um, I worked on the high school newspaper, it was called Southern Exposure. I attended Raytown South uh, High School. and. Uh, my teacher uh, basically one day presented uh, some information to me about the Minority High School Journalism Workshop and that is sponsored by the Kansas City Association of Black Journalists which is a chapter of the National Association of Black Journalists and I would encourage uh, your Casey Career Girl audience um, if you have a uh, women in the audience that are in high school, um, and, and boys of course, mm -hmm. um, that they would uh, check that out. The, the National Association of Black Journalists, they have some great programs for high school students that are interested in journalism. Um, but I went through that program. Uh, basically, it instructed us, uh, the students that went through the program, in the fundamentals of journalism. So I got an opportunity to go to news stations and shadow news reporters and newscasters and um, go out into the field and uh, try my hand at uh, doing my own news stories. Mm -hmm. And so I would go out, interview people, uh, come back, write the story. Uh, we actually got a chance to work in some of the satellite offices of the Kansas City Star and uh, write stories um, and uh, then come back and uh, to put a newspaper together and uh, present the information and present our own stories. And then we also did mock newscasts through um, KNBC Channel 9 News okay, um, as well. Can okay, you share my KC Career Girl viewers if they wanted to uh, join the Minority Journalism Program? How would they be able to get in touch with that program or would they need to talk with their principals or their teachers? Can you share with them a little bit more about how would they be able to join that organization? Sure, Deidre. Um, Basically, I would encourage students to go into their high school counselor, um, ask about the Kansas, uh, Kansas City Association of Black Journalists uh, Minority Journalism Workshop. Um, ask them if they have any information on it. If they can't get it through their high school counselor, then I would encourage them to go to uh, that organization's website. I believe it is www.kcabj.org. Um, and they could find, possibly find the information there. Um, there is also a man by the name of Lewis Duguid that works for the Kansas City Star, and I believe that he is still heavily involved in the program. So they can possibly um, contact the Kansas City Star and uh, ask for Mr. Duguid, and uh, he can definitely uh, put them in touch uh, with the uh, 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 professionals that work in the program. You hear that KC Career Girl viewers? If you want to get started with your journalism project or happen to have a journalism career, go to your counselor, call the um, the Kansas City Star, get in touch, do what you have to do, get yourself out there. Okay, thanks for that information Ms. Williams. Um, also, how did you get started on your journey to having your own uh, communications marketing firm? Okay, well, um, picking up uh, where I kind of left off, um, I, so I went through the Minority Journalism uh, Workshop uh, through the Kansas City Association of Black Journalists. Um, that really uh, inspired me to uh, pursue uh, a career in journalism, and um, I started to look for colleges uh, in Missouri and Kansas. Uh, that were within good driving distance. I wanted to be <laughs> close to my family. Um, 
And uh, that encouraged me to look into programs, you know, at, at different colleges. The University of Missouri uh, was one of the schools that I took a look at. And uh, actually, the University of Missouri is, has one of the top journalism programs mm -hmm. in the country. I believe it is still in the top five. Yeah, it is. Great. Um, so it's a, it's, it's a wonderful uh, school uh, for those of you who are interested in pursuing a journalism career. And um, I, I basically went to that school for four years. Um, the last two years, I spent strictly focused on learning the uh, fundamentals of becoming a good journalist. Uh, my focus was on broadcast journalism, which meant I was interested in a career in either radio or, or television uh, journalism, and I got an opportunity to train at uh, KOMU, and that's basically the University of Missouri Columbia's uh, own television station. Mm. It's a training ground um, for for their uh, broadcast journalism students. Oh. And so it's I got like on hand training, right? Like on hand training within the radio station and everything. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and, and so I got an opportunity to work behind the camera as a producer, which basically meant that I was um, going out, searching the wires, news wires, for different uh, story ideas. I uh, was also looking at news releases that um, uh, the community would send in to the news station, uh, basically presenting story ideas that we could cover in our newscast. Um, and then also bringing my own ideas in to work as well and selecting from uh, those and uh, basically coming up with stories that I could then write and uh, I would write the scripts for the newscasters um, or, or those that you see in, in front of the camera and uh, that's what they would read on the news every day. Uh, that's what you know the studio audience sees or the audience, I'm sorry, sees every day and um, uh, that's basically what I did. I also worked as a reporter. And, um, How did you like that? <laughs> um, I absolutely loved it. I loved uh, being able to go out into the community um, and uh, just speak with people <laughs> about uh, their different various experiences. I learned a lot about a lot of different topics. Um, I found myself at times and from, from everywhere from homeless shelters um, to you know being on campus and uh, you know sororities and fraternities they would have their own events and um, uh, different uh, things that they were doing in the community so that was a lot of fun uh, I also found myself you know interviewing the highway patrol uh, about <laughs> different things so I mean you get to be in a lot of different situations um, when you are a reporter and I, I really did enjoy that um, so after uh, college um, uh, I found myself you know having to get a job and uh, I obviously wanted to work um, in, in a, some, a news station of some sort I, I chose to uh, want to work at a television news station and um, Got the opportunity, uh, was offered a job at Fox 4 News as an associate producer Fox for their four. morning show program. Um, so that was basically uh, my journey uh, as, as a journalist, oh. preparing to become a journalist, rather. That's a good journey. <laughs> okay, um, when was the first time that you felt a great measure of success in starting out with having your own company? Well. I would say it was from the time uh, that I got uh, my business identification number uh, and that's basically kind of like a, a social security number but it's, it's for a business. Um, it basically says that you know I'm ready to, to be in business and uh, after I make my money uh, <laughs> the, you know the following year that I would have to pay, ta pay taxes you know from the money that I earned for that, uh, in that my year. business so um, that felt good because I, I just felt you know when I received that that okay um, I'm actually you know a legitimate company um, now and uh, I'm ready to get started so felt a great sense of pride um, from, from receiving that. So let me get this straight. If one of my KC Career Girl viewers wanted to uh, start their own business, they would basically have to go file for a license to have their own business to actually pay taxes. So you can't open up a business for free without paying taxes. You hear that, KC Career Girl viewers? So um, let's get a little more into about when you started 
or opening your business, um, you said that you had to first uh, or get it started and then pay taxes next for the next year. So during that year, you didn't have to like pay taxes first. You just had your business started running it. And what type of paperwork did you have to go through with um, starting your own business? Because I know you have to deal with a lot of paperwork. Well, the paperwork uh, that I had to deal with, um, again, I had to get that business identification number uh, from, from the government. And then I also had to uh, select the type of, of business, uh, the formation of my business. And there are various different types of businesses. Um, you can be a sole proprietorship or you know, limit liability company um, or a corporation. And uh, basically, uh, the type of business that you decide to become just depends on the amount of employees um, that you have in your business, uh, the type of business uh, that you have, and then uh, other sorts of issues such as, you know, if something happens um, in your business, could someone, and someone wants to sue you, or another business wants to sue you, um, can they go after your personal assets? And um, I decided to start a limited liability company uh, to insulate myself, you know, from someone or another entity going after my personal assets, you know, in case they tried to sue me for some reason. And uh, there are a lot of liability issues with the marketing communications or advertising firm uh, because you're dealing with a lot of intellectual property, people's copyrights, um, their logos, um, that sort of thing. So uh, lots of uh, legal uh, implications that you can run into. So that was the reason why I started a limit liability company and there are different fees that uh, each state charges uh, for you know uh, you to form uh, a business uh, of that type. Uh, all of the different types of businesses 